Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is pruritus, prurigo, and lichen simplex. I am Dr. Ashar Ahmed Mashood, and you can follow me on Instagram, email, and WhatsApp. So we will first describe what is pruritus. Pruritus or chronic pruritus is defined as the unpleasant sensation that leads to the desire to scratch. And to call the pruritus as chronic pruritus, it should last at least six weeks. It is a symptom of dermatological, systemic, neurological and psychiatric diseases. Clinically, it may occur on a diseased skin or a non-diseased skin. The secondary scratched lesions occur frequently and if chronic, may form certain typical clinical features like lichen simplex or chronic prurigo. So lichen simplex and chronic prurigo are the end result of scratching which occur in a chronic pruritus. Several specific terms are created, such as aquagenic pruritus, that is uh, pruritus which develop after contact with water, promontory pruritus, that is uh, chronic pruritus occurring in advanced disease, especially the malignant diseases, then paraneoplastic pruritus, that is pruritus that occur in contacts with malignant conditions. There is a long list of diseases that cause pruritus. And the uh, first and the foremost are the dermatological diseases. Among the dermatological diseases, uh, atopic dermatitis is the one that is associated with intense pruritus. In addition, urticaria, erythroderma, post-burn scars, psoriasis, systemic sclerosis, and pruritic papular eruption of HIV are also common causes of pruritus. Then there is a long list of metabolic and endocrine diseases that cause pruritus. That include hepatobiliary disease, primary biliary cirrhosis, hepatitis C virus infection, chronic kidney disease, anorexia, diabetes mellitus, and hypothyroidism. Pruritus is also seen in HIV and AIDS and scabies. Then hematological diseases and neoplasms. Myelofibrosis, Hodgkin lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, polycythemia vera, iron deficiency anemia, essential thrombocytosis, leukemia and solid tumor can all cause pruritus. Then there are a number of drugs that cause pruritus include rituximab, all targeted cancer therapies, imitinib, infliximab, and hydroxyethyl starch. Neurological diseases like brachioradial pruritus, notalgia parasthetica, and post herpetic neuralgia. Psychiatric or so psychosomatic diseases like depression. Most of the diseases are discussed further in this chapter. So while discussing pruritus, it should be known that there is a heterogeneity of the underlying diseases that results in diversity of clinical presentations and the itch, which is already, although a generalized term, but it has different characteristic manifestations in different diseases, such as the intensity varies, the quality varies, and the course varies. And there are certain dermatological, laboratory, and radiological findings associated with that age, and the response to therapy is also different. So no two patients of pruritus have similar course and similar treatment. Most patients with chronic prurigo have impaired quality of life. They have sleep disturbance. They have psychosomatic reactions, such as reactive depression. Interestingly, Female patients experience higher negative impact on quality of life as compared to men if they are suffering from pruritus. With increased age, the prevalence of chronic pruritus increases. There is no age limit. 
for the development of chronic pruritus, but frequency is increased as age advances. Chronic pruritus almost equally involve male and female, while women have more neurological, neuropathic, and psychosomatic disease. The difference between acute and chronic pruritus in skin types have, still has to be resolved. Let us discuss the pathophysiology of cutaneous itch. There are unmyelinated nerves uh, with mechanoinsensitive C fibers and thinly myelinated A delta fibers, which are specialized for transmission of histamine induced itch. This may explain the different sensations described by patient while itching. Most frequently, it is burning and stinging, but they also feel pricking, warmth, cold sensations. In addition, in atopic eczema, in uh, psoriasis, there is characteristically increased substance P, positive dermal fibers, and substance P, in addition to histamine, is also an inducer of itching or pruritus. Central transmission of itch. The peripheral efferent nerve fibers transmit the itch signals to the spinal cord where the efferent enters the dorsal horn. It is currently assumed that spinal cord pain, neural pain neurons control itch neurons and thereby contribute to relief of itch by scratching. So scratching induces pain and this pain reduces the itch. Secondary itch neurons cross over to contralateral spinothalamic tract and ascends to prefrontal areas, premotor cortex, anterior insular cortex, anterior mid uh, cingulate cortex, thalamus, basal ganglion, and cerebellum, all of which are involved in sensation, evaluation, emotion, reward, and memory. So the itch has both the peripheral as well as central part. Scratching. There is, a, there is a reflex which is called as the itch reflex and the resultant response is the scratching. It is the reflex functioning at the spinal cord, although modified greatly by higher centers. Scratching relieves pruritus or itch for several minutes. Alternatively, Scratching could simply damage the sensory endings and why some itch evoke scratching and excoriation as in scabies where other prompt rubbing like lichen planus or anticaria is not known. So there are some diseases that provoke scratching and excoriation. While well, in other conditions, the itch is not that severe and the response is in form of rubbing. Scratching has been ingeniously utilized and is indirect objective method to quantify itch. So we generally assume that more is the scratching, more is the itch. Peripheral and central sensitization. Sensitization is defined as the increased response of primary sensory neurons to itch and pain mediators. So we can call some people as extremely sensitive and some people as less sensitive. If you are more sensitive, then you are more um, responsive to itch and pain mediators. In skin hyperplasia of sensory neurons and reduced threshold of, threshold of neuroreceptors result in peripheral sensitization mediated by several mediators like bradykinin and nerve growth factors. So the sensitization of, uh, a, uh, of a particular area to itch is created by production of certain neurotransmitters. So this table shows certain mediators and their role in itch in certain diseases. Like acetylcholine has a role in atopic eczema, IL-31 has a role in atopic eczema and familial primary cutaneous amyloidosis. Then histamine is an itch mediator in urticaria, 
in insect bite reaction and in cutaneous mastocytosis, endorphins and dinorphins in cholestatic pruritus and uremic pruritus, tryptase, mucinin, atopic eczema and cutaneous mastocytosis, and substance P is a mediator in atopic eczema and prurigo nodularis and sometimes psoriasis. Histamine and histamine receptors. Histamine is considered to be one of the primary um, uh, itch uh, uh, inducer. It is an arch typical mediator of inflammation. It causes pronounced itching if injected subcutaneously. However, repeated injection of histamine produce tachyphylaxis and so its result, its reaction, your yeah, response becomes less and less with time. So it is unlike that in chronic pruritus, histamine is the main mediator, especially in atopic eczema and in lichen symptoctronicus. There are four different histamine receptors, which are classed as H1, H2, H3, and H4. The H1 receptors is traditionally responsible for histamine-induced itching, but recently the spotlight is shifted to H4 receptor, which appeared to cause pruritus by direct action on a variety of immune and inflammatory cells that include mast cells and T helper 2 cells, lymphocyte, T helper 2 lymphocytes in atopic axon. The main source of histamine in inflamed skin is the mast cells and basophilic leukocytes. In urticaria and insect bite reaction, the histamine cross-linked to high affinity immunoglobulin E receptor, which are called as FC uh, epsilon R1. Then the second mediator is acetylcholine. It's a neurotransmitter in atomic nervous system, act both on muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Intradermal injection of acetylcholine evokes each in atopic individuals. Botulinum toxin A, which is known to stop or suppress acetylcholine release, uh, known to suppress histamine-induced pruritus experimentally in Notalgia parasthetica. The third mediator is substance P. It's an 11 amino acid neuropeptide which preferentially binds to neurokinin-1 receptor expressed in keratinocytes and in mast cells. In the skin, substance P induced neurogenic inflammation with redness, wheeling, and itching, at least in part due to deregulation of dermal mast cells. Then we are going to discuss the opiate peptides and their role in itching. These opioid peptides uh, um, Opioid peptides are classified into three groups, the endorphins, encaphalins, and dinorphins. And their receptors are also of three types, micro, delta, and kappa. The pruritic action of morphine and other opioids involves the micro receptors, opioid receptors, and it is antagonized by naloxone or naltrexone. Ligation of kappa opioid receptors also evoke antipruritic effects. So skin express the micro-opioid receptors. Significant tissue level of opioid peptides are found in human skin in cholestasis. Hence, cholestatic pruritus is ameliorated by micro-opioid receptor antagonist, the naloxone. Interleukin 2 and 31. Interleukin-2 is secreted by activated T lymphocytes. Both the presence of activated T lymphocytes in atopic skin and antipruritic effect of cyclosporin that suppresses interleukin-2 indicates the role of interleukin-2 in inducing pruritus in atopic eczema. And more recently, interleukin-31 has emerged, which is the mediator of pruritus in atopic eczema. Interleukin-31 is a Th2 cytokine, and indirect evidence suggests the beta endorphin is also involved in itch due to atopic eczema. Now, once a patient of uh, chronic pruritus comes to you, then it is mandatory to take a pruritus specific history and a general history. The pruritus specific history include the asking the patient the time of start and total duration of pruritus, then localization that is 
where it is localized, from where it starts and how it spreads, then call it your pruritus, like burning, pringing, pricking, tingling, uh, res resembling insect crawling, which is called as the formication. Then also ask about the intensity um, and mark the inst intensity on visual analog scale. Then also uh, ask about the codes. That is variation during the day and spontaneous improvement. How does spontaneous improvement occur and how does spontaneous deterioration occurs? Then what are the behavioral response to itch in a form of scratch or rub? Then what is the temporal association with previous illnesses, surgeries and medications? Any psychological stress and does this itch affects the quality of life and cause sleep disturbance. Then also take general history like previous illnesses, including dermatosis, the drug intake, infusion and blood transfusions, previous surgeries, previous allergies, atopic predisposition, any clinical signs for malignancies like weight loss, fever or night sweats, and pregnancy. The clinical features. Chronic pruritus may initially occur on non-diseased skin or along with dermatosis, which is pruritus of inflamed skin. Patient may present with escoriations, papules, nodules, lichenification, scars, hyper and hypopigmentation, which all results from scratching. If these are predominant, they may conceal an initial dermatosis. Sometimes the initial uh, feature, the actual feature of dermatosis is highlighted or uh, is uh, suppressed or is covered by the secondary uh, phenomenon that is escoriations and papules and nodules. It's important to distinguish the primary dermatosis from uh, secondary scratch lesions and ask the patients about the method they use to relieve pruritus. Certain clinical pictures have been summarized under specific names as lichen simplex and pruragonodularis. So once a patient of uh, chronic pruritus comes to you, it is first and foremost to find the clinical signs and symptoms of specific dermatosis. But as mentioned before, sometimes the clinical signs and symptoms of specific dermatosis is masked by the secondary signs. So you have to differentiate between the primary signs and secondary signs of the disease. Uh, pruritus and inflamed skin. Majority of dermatosis induce pruritus, some less, some more. Uh, atopic eczema and urticaria are among the dermatoses which induce severe pruritus. And severe pruritus is also a feature of Cesare syndrome and cutaneous mastocytosis. In mycosis fungoides, pruritus may be the presenting symptoms without any skin sign, which is called as the invisible mycosis fungoides. Itch in atopic eczema or atopic itch or in psoriasis vulgaris, psoriatic itch is investigated in current studies aim at showing the antipruritic effect of new target therapies in these conditions. Pruritus of atopic eczema. Itch of atopic eczema is aggravated by scratching, which causes enhanced inflammation. So this is an itch scratch cycle, which is a vicious cycle and which goes on and on. Itching is usually worse at night and is aggravated by contact with wool, by sweating and ingestion of spicy food and alcohol. Allokinesis, itchy skin of atopic eczema is mainly due to dryness or hyperplasia of skin nerves. Emollients which should always be prescribed which may be inadequate alone where inflammatory changes are responsible for itching. Uh, an evidence-based review of effectiveness of H1 antihistamines concluded that they are of little value in relieving chronic pruritus. However, they act mainly due to their sed sedative actions. So in chronic pruritus, one must choose an antihistamine with sedative properties. Systemic antibiotics frequently bring about relief from pruritus. 
Steph aureus behave as super antigens leading to T cell activation and also activates dermal mast cells via tall Reich receptors and promotes the production of a proratogen, which is interleukin-31. So interleukin-31 is, in short, released due to the staphylococcal superantigens. So if the staphylococcus is treated by antibiotics, then this itch cycle is also suppressed. Treatment of pruritus of atopic eczema. Topical corticosteroids are frequently effective in suppressing itching. Broad band and narrow band UVB, immunosuppressives including azathioprine and cyclosporin are highly effective in relieving the signs and symptoms of itching in chronic atopic dermatitis by mainly by activating CD4. Uh, mainly by action on activated CD4 T helper lymphocytes. The topical calcineurin inhibitor tacrolimus and pimercolimus provides an effective measure to ameliorate pruritus due to the action to downgrade regulate the activated T cells. Then similarly, the opioid antagonist like oral naltrexone is value in intensely pruritic atopic eczema by blocking the uh, acetylcholine release and uh, and opioid receptors. Pruritus of psoriasis vulgaris. The generalized pruritus is a feature of psoriasis in 80 to 89 percent of patients. Pruritus may involve all areas of body with some correlation between the psoriasis area severity index score and intensity of itch. So if the PASI score is high, itch is also high. Presence of intensity of itch did not depend on age and gender of the patients, the type of psoriasis, duration of disease, and the last outbreak of psoriasis. So um, it means that itching in psoriasis is not related to um, the age, gender, and type of psoriasis. There are several, several factors that exacerbate itch in psoriasis, and that includes the high temp temperatures, skin dryness, sweating, and stress. It is very likely that inflammatory T cells in neutrophils and their mediators such as interleukin-17 contribute to the pruritus and psoriasis. Sensory nerve fibers, NGFs and neuropeptides also contribute. Patients report a decline of itch accompanying effective eradication of psoriatic lesions. So the novel therapies such as aprilimast have shown to reduce psoriasis itch. So as you can see, interleukin-17 is the cause of itch in suppression of interleukin-17 by different agents, including the biologics, will help in relieving the itch of psoriasis. Chronic kidney disease of nephrogenic or uremic pruritus. Persistent itching is a major cause of impaired quality of life in patients with chronic renal failure. It is becoming less prevalent due to more efficient dialysis technique, but still occur in 10 to 77% of patients of chronic kidney disease. It is more common in patients receiving hemodialysis than in patients on continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis. The skin in some patients are dry, and but essentially normal in appearance in most. The nephrogenic pruritus is persistent, extensive, and refractory to therapy. There are secondary skin changes due to scratching and rubbing, include pigmentation, pruragonodularis, eczematization, and secondary infection. However, there is no correlation between mass cell population densities and pruritus. There is no convincing correlation between the parathormone levels and pruritus. The nephrogenic pruritus has been proposed to be related to aluminum overload during hemodialysis and it is treatable by administration of desferi oxamine ethyl oxamine emicylate. Histamine is an improbable candidate since treatment with antihistamines is ineffective. So histamine is out. Patient with chronic renal failure so increased number of intradermal CD1 positive T cells, elevated C-reactive protein and interleukin-6 levels. These findings question the term uremic pruritus. 
which is now avoided is replaced by nephrogenic pruritus. So it was thought that it is because of high uremia in the blood, but now this theory has lost its importance. Uh, important general therapeutic measures include emollients and vigorous treatment of secondary eczema and associated infection. Dialysis itself has little benefit on nephrogenic pruritus. The only curative and reliable effective treatment of renal pruritus is the renal transplant. Parathyroidectomy may be followed by remission of pruritus in patients with secondary hyperparathyroidism. Phototherapy and UVB is a frequent effective treatment and I've myself tried this and it found very effective in such patients. Gabapentin is effective in treatment of pruritus and renal failure. Orally administered opioid antagonist naltrexone is also effective. Other treatments of uncertain effectiveness are heparin, uh, mexiletine, iron exchange and intravenous lidocaine. Then hepatobiliary disease or cholestasis or cholestatic pruritus. The pruritus may be generalized or localized. It is associated with rubbing rather than scratching. So secondary escoriation, eczematization and infection is less common in hepatobiliary disease than in renal disease. And recent studies suggest that autotoxin and bile acid receptors, TGR5, is involved in pathogenesis. Hepatitis C is an important cause of cholestatic pruritus. Cholestatic pruritus is speculated to be associated with elevated plasma level of bile salt, but the direct correlation is lacking. Apart from bile disease, cholestatic pruritus also occur in pregnancy and premenstrual. Method of lowering serum and skin bile salt level by plasma perfusion through Charcoal coated glass beads is associated with marked improvement in cholestatic pruritus. And rifampicin is also known to reduce this itch. There is observed clinical improvement after procedures like extracorporeal al albumin dialysis and photo, uh, phototherapy. The opioid antagonists naloxone and naltroxone our value in treatment of pruritus cholestasis due to significant tissue level of opioid peptide in chronic cholestatic patient. So uh, in intractable chronic pruritus due to cholestasis, nalox naloxone or naltrexone should be used. Iron deficiency is implicated as cause of chronic pruritus in absence of any visible skin disease and in absence of anemia. So patients' correlation of iron deficiency apparently correlates with improvement in pruritus. Then pruritus is also seen in thyrotoxicosis and it is because of the warm, moist skin, uh, which is a sign of thyrotoxicosis and this cause is uncertain, but cutaneous vasodilation, which is a regular feature of the disease, leads to increased skin temperature and lowers the itch threshold. In mixed edema, there is excessive dryness of the skin, which feel cool, and respond to application by moisturizing creams. Polycythemia vera is another common cause of chronic pruritus. As much as 50% of patients of polycythemia vera have mutation in enzyme of genus kinase when develop a severely preaky and distressing discomfort within minutes of water, contact and last for 15 to 60 minutes. This is referred to as bath itch. This seems to be associated with elevated serum urinary histamine levels or platelet aggregation. Successful treatment of pemphigus vulgaris may not relieve the itch. However, antihistamines are effective in 30%. Puva and narrowband UV phototherapy is successful in some patients. And long-term treatment with interferon, uh, interferon alpha-2b or serotonin uptake inhibitors like uh, peroxetine or pain modulators, pregabalin, helps in some patients, while some patients also respond to aspirin. Diabetes mellitus or diabetogenic pruritus. The generalized pruritus is a manifestation of diabetes. Further analysis suggests that it is significantly associated with diabetic polyneuropathy. Malignancy or paraneoplastic pruritus. It's a well-known pruritus and precedes the development of solid tumors or hematoproliferative disease. 
and also called as the premontary pruritus. In Hodgkin disease, 30% of patients present with pruritus. Other develop other tumors that is associated with paraneoplastic pruritus are Cesare syndrome, myelodysplastic syndrome, myelofibrosis, multiple myeloma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. Other examples include the unilateral pruritus in, in the face in, uh, is an early symptom of brain stem glioma. The pruritus of the nose may be a presenting symptom of cerebral tumor and abdominal itching is reported to be associated with astrocytoma in neurofibromatosis. So, uh, such kind of typical pruritus should also be um, carefully looked after to diagnose a particular disease. Other solid tumors like liver, breast, lung, gastric, laryngeal, prostate, and cervical carcinoma are associated with localized or generalized pruritus. The paraneoplastic age is relieved by selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like paroxetine, combined kappa opioid receptor antagonist, and opioid receptors. Um, antagonist and pain modulators like pregabalin. So paroxetine, the um, naltroxone, and pregabalin. Drug-induced pruritus. If the drug is responsible for pruritus without rash, then the rash is rare. It is estimated that pruritus accounts for 5% of the adverse drug reactions. In general, the drug-induced pruritus is distinguished uh, into two groups. The first are the group of drugs and is uh, pathomechanisms of chronic pruritus is known. And second group, when this mechanism is unclear. So in the first group, there are drugs like morphine, chloroquine, and hydroxyethyl starch, which is used as plasma substitute. Um, these drugs are known to cause pruritus and they are poorly responsive to antihistamine but may respond to topical capsaicin and systemic gabapentine and naltroxone. The second group comprises of large number of substances like uh, ACE inhibitors, captopril, analapril, beta blockers, etinolol and metoprolol, Antidiabetics, for example, glamipride and metformin, diuretics like hydroxychlorothiazides, hormones, statins, and allopurinol. Pruritus in pregnancy. Pruritus occur in 20% of pregnant women. In majority, the itching is linked to the pre-existing dermatosis such as psoriasis or atopic eczema. There are a few questionable entities like prurigo of pregnancy and pruritus, pruritic folliculitis of pregnancy. But whenever these occur, they are without fetal risk. Polymorphic eruption of pregnancy, previously known as the pruritic articarial papules and plaques of pregnancy or PUP, occur in 21.6% and also do, do not take, does not risk the fetal health. Pemphigoid gestationis is rare. 4.2% of pregnancy and lead to small for date babies. The most severe form of pregnancy associated pruritus is the intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy, occurring in 3% of pregnant women. It generally occurs in late pregnancy and starts from hand and feet before becoming generalized. Typically, bile acids are elevated and joint dysmia occur. There is no treatment for itching. Um, no treatment for itching is absolutely safe in pregnancy. However, loratadine has been used in over 5,000 pregnancy with no increased risk of peters and can be applied to all trimester of pregnancy. So, loratadine is one of the safe antihistamine drugs. Topical corticosteroid may be applied if necessary and in late pregnancy, uh, UV therapy is possible. Pruritus of senescence. Persistent and widespread itching is often associated with extensive excoriation. It is experienced by at least 50% of people 
in several decades of life and beyond. In women, this itching is a manifestation of postmenopausal syndrome. The pruritus in elderly people may be a skin manifestation of adverse drug reaction or symptomatic of depression and loneliness or combination of several of these factors. So uh, it is not just the dryness, but it can be a reaction to drugs, loneliness, depression. However, most instances, the itching is the result of excessively dry skin associated with failure to retain water. The resulting dryness and fine cracking is associated with troublesome itching, but in most cases, responds to emollients. White salt paraffin ointment is cheap and occlusive and is shown to accelerate the recovery of barrier function in damaged skin. Patient must be encouraged to apply emollients at least four times a day and if necessary, maintain the ambient temperature and humidity. Then peroxetine, amitriptyline, mertapazine at night are useful in patients who cannot sleep and have some element of depression. Corticosteroid, antihistamine and cooling lotions are not indicated in itching due to xerosis because they tend to aggravate it. Neurological diseases. There is these uh, pruritus is called as the neuropathic pruritus. So chronic pruritus may occur in context with peripheral or central nervous system related nerve fiber injury, usually causing overlapping symptoms of pruritus and pain. And this is called as the pruralgia. And there is a wide range of perceptions like burning, wet sensations, electric shock or pain, needle and pain, uh, uh, abnormal pain, which is allodyne. So pruritus due to nerve fiber compression is usually located in corresponding dermatome, while nerve fiber degeneration lead to localized or generalized pruritus. So if it is due to compression, then it is localized. And if it is due to degeneration, it is generalized. Therapy of neuropathic pruritus is challenging and commonly antipruritic drugs like antihistamines, doxepin, chlorpromazine, diphenylhydantoin, um, topical and intravenous steroids do not lead to amelioration of symptoms completely. Notalgia parasthaltica is a fairly common cause of localized persistent pruritus. It is characterized by a burning pruritus localized in mid-scapular region, and, but there can be a more widespread distribution, including the scalp. There is mild lacrification and pigmentation with or without macular amyloidosis consequent of rubbing. And recent reports stress the importance of nerve root entrapment and sensory neuropathy of primary dorsal rami of spinal nerve T2 to T6. Capsaicin cream appear to be effective in some patients. Then similar pruritus is brachioradial pruritus. This is located in shoulder, neck, elbow, and upper and lower arm in dermatome C5 and 6. It is worsened by sunlight and improved by cold application, ice pack sign. More female are affected, mostly over 60. Compression of spinal cord and nerve root of cervical spine the cervical radiculopathy by disc herniation by osteophytes by cervical rib is the most important cause. So MRI of a cervical spine is strongly recommended. Topical local anesthetic or cooling compounds ameliorate, ameliorate this uh, pruritus. Most effective drug is the anti-convulsant gabapentin, 300 to 3200 mg per day. Other treatments include topical capsaicin and oral benzodiazepines. Then psychiatric or psychosomatic disease or psychogenic pruritus. It is again localized or generalized and is a rare manifestation of psychiatric disease. The conclusion that local or generalized itching of psychogenic origin is always arrived as a diagnosis of exclusion. Perianal itch in women and perianal itch in men and women and vulval itch in women is a manifestation of local psychogenic pruritus and stress. 
attack of nocturnal pruritus with sensation of heat and accompanied by sweating is also a feature of anxiety. Then there is widespread psychogenic pruritus with extensive disfiguring excoriation. Even scarring to the extent of cell mutilation is also a sign of severe depression and anxiety. Parasitophobia or delusion of parasitic infection is readily recognizable. Although rarely successful, the psychiatric advice should always be sought and antidepressant and anxiolytic should be started, including doxepin, risperidone, and hydroxyzine. Pimozide, which is phenylbutylpipridine, is a phenothiazine is used for treatment of delusion of parasitosis, and peroxetine is also employed. Classification and severity and measurement of pruritus. A uniform and generally valid method for documenting pruritus is currently being developed. The severity of pruritus is determined by visual analog scale. The visual analog scale is 100 millimeter long line marked with n.0. That is no pruritus with 100, the worst, Im worst imaginable H. And patient is asked to mark his pruritus on this scale. Then there is another scale which is called as the numerical rating scale in which the pruritus is measured from 0 to 10. Then verbal rating scale is another instrument and severity of pruritus is coded with graduated adjectives. That is 0, no pruritus, to 4 to very severe pruritus. The severity of intense Intensity scale uh, of H, visual analog scale, is as followed. That is 0 point, no pruritus, uh, more than 0, but less than 30 points. Mild pruritus, if it is between 30 points, but less than 70 points. It's moderate pruritus. If it is 70 to 90 points, then it is severe pruritus. And more than 90, very severe. The dermatological examination is very necessary in patient of chronic pruritus. Include thorough inspection of entire skin, including the mucous membrane, scalp, hair, nail, and anogenital region. And this also includes the examination of lymph nodes. Distribution of primary and secondary skin lesions uh, is very important and should be differentiated. And general physical examination includes uh, the abdominal palpation of liver, spleen, and kidney along with lymph nodes. Laboratory and radiological diagnosis of chronic pruritus. The first step is to ask for blood complete picture, which include differential blood count and ESR, then RFTs, renal function test, liver function test, including alkaline phosphatase, AST, ALT, and bilirubin, thyroid function test, glucose, serum ferritin, and patient of more than 40 years stool for occult blood. Genitoanal pruritus should be excluded by stool test for parasites. Then chest x-ray should be done, ultrasound abdomen should be done, and biopsy and routine histopathology and DIF if there are any uh, objective signs of skin disease. Then general measures to treat chronic pruritus. Uh, general measures include avoidance of dry skin, and all the factors that worsen the dry skin, like heat, frequent wash washing and bathing. Then avoid contact with irritant substances like the chamomile and tea tree oil. Avoid the hot and spicy food and large amount of hot drinks and alcohol. Excitement, strain, and negative stresses should all be avoided. And there should be application of non-alkaline soap, moisturizing showers, and bath oils. Luke warm water bath. Bathing time should not exceed 20 minutes. Soft clothing permeable to air like cotton. Skin moisturizer or daily basis, especially after shower and bathing. Topical application with symptomatic relief, especially for pruritus at night. Several cream lotion sprays containing, containing antipruritic substances like urea, camphor, menthol or tannin. Wet cooling wraps with black tea may be used. And the guidelines recommended for symptomatic therapy, step one, 
basic therapy with moisturizers, initial symptomatic therapy, like uh, systemic non sedative H1 antihistamines and topical corticosteroids. So this is the step one. Step two, uh, if origin of chronic pruritus is not known, then symptomatic causative adaptive therapy. Uh, step three, in pruritus of unknown origin of therapy refracted cases in second step, then we go for systemic therapy like capsaicin, calcineurin inhibitor, naltrexone, gabapentin, pregabalin, UV, phototherapy. Concomitant treatment in every step, Diagnos diagnosis and treatment of underlying disease, general therapeutic me measures, in sleep disorders, give H1 antihistamine, sedative type, and tricyclic antidepressant in neuroleptics, psychosomatic care, habit reversal of scratch behavior, in erosive scratch lesion, disinfection, and topical corticosteroids. Now, in the end, we are going to discuss two specific diseases. The first is the prurigo nodularis and the second is lichen simplex. Prurigo nodularis is defined as highly pruritic condition with numerous symmetrically distributed hyperkeratotic and eroded nodules. It evolves in patients with chronic pruritus as a consequence of continuous scratching. Nodules in prurigo nodularis is intensely itchy and thus a vicious itch scratch cycle is the cause and uh, is a result of highly refractory therapy. And it is accompanied by numerous diseases and, high, and have a high negative impact on patient quality of life. There are different kinds of prurigo, like prurigo pigmentosa, which is characterized by recurrent itchy rash with net-like hyperpigmentation. Actinic prurigo or Hutchinson's prurigo is a small, intensely itchy papule seen on the sun-exposed areas. Hebra prurigo is chronic pruritic lesions, uh, skin disease of unknown etiology. It occurs mainly in children with high serum IgE. Bezinus prurigo is prurigo-like lesions in atopic eczema. Jacquard prurigo is linear prurigo in atopic eczema. Pemphigoid nodularis is prurigo nodularis in pemphigoid patients. This is a pronounced pebbly lignification in a patient of atopic eczema. Epidemiology, prurigo nodularis affect patients all ages, including children, but most common in older patients. It is more common in women. There is no data on ethical differences in prurigo nodularis. Patient may suffer from years from prurigo nodularis. And according to one study, the average duration of prurigo nodularis before the patient present to a specialist is 6.5 years. Predisposing factor. Prurigo nodularis is a reaction pattern that occurs in chronic prurigo and accordingly all factors which influence chronic prurigo also influence in causation of prurigo nodularis. And among them, atopic eczema is the key factor. Pathology. Once established in a subset of patient Chronic prurigo causes severe uncontrolled scratch that leads to mechanical trauma on the skin. First, there are excoriation and crust formation, but prolonged scratching induces papules and nodule formation surrounded by hyperpigmentation, which are the characteristic lesion of prurigo nodularis. The thick compact hyperkeratosis, focal parakeratosis, hypergranulosis, irregular epidermal hyperplasia, and fibrosis of papillary dermis with vertically arranged collagen fibers are few features in histopathology. We are going to histopathology. So, this is how the lesion of nodular histopathological appearance of nodular prurigo would look like. There is hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis with irregular epidermal hyperplasia and spongiosis and uh, thickening of the collagen bundles in the deep dermis. Clinical features. Obtaining an accurate medical history from the patient is always challenging and patients have hundreds of lesions and they cannot describe the dynamics of how the lesions started. 
So the history should be focused on identification of underlying disease of origin. Typical lesions are pink nodules with hyperpigmented border. Uh, later, the lesions become hyperkeratotic with eroded surface. Nodules are rounded, flash, or large. Tobacco nodularis is disseminated bilaterally, symmetrically over the whole skin, but preferentially dorsal parts of the extremities, decollate, back, and buttocks. Usually, palm, soles, and face is spared. The central back is also spared, which is called as the butterfly sign, and this is apparently the area where the hand of the patient cannot reach and scratch. So these are the typical lesion of prurigo nodularis. And here you can see several eroded papules on the thigh and the shins. Clinical variants. The clinical variant concerns only the underlying disease. These may be numerous as in uh, chronic prurigo. Prurigo nodularis patient may be dermatological, systemic, neurological, or psychiatric diseases. As far as associated pruritus sensations are concerned, the median pruritus intensity in prurigo nodularis patient is as high as 8 to 10 in numeric rating score. Further qualities of itch are reported as burning in 60%, stinging in 47.2%, tingling in 35 heat insufficiency in 21.3 and cold in 2.7. Disease course and prognosis, prurigo nodularis is highly refractory to therapy, lasts for years and decades with slow progression. It uh, may resolve completely under treatment, and but patients continue to scratch even in the absence of itch sensation. Investigation. Aim of dermatological examination is to identify an underlying dermatosis. Skin biopsy is essential in prurigo nodularis of uncertain origin. The laboratory and radiological investigation are similar to those in diagnostic workup of chronic prurigo. In 13% of patients of prurigo nodularis, underlying disease and dermatosis is not found. Management. In brief, therapy must be multimodal, including therapy of underlying disease, like atopic, use of topical emollients, topical substances of short-term relief of itch like menthol, sy specific systemic antiprotic therapy, and psychosomatic counseling. Oral treatment include gabapentine, pregabalin, naltroxone, apripitant uh, apri cyclosporin. Several reports focus on effectiveness of thalidomide in prurigo nodularis, but this is not a common drug to be given because of its side effects. There is a randomized controlled trial of betamethasone valerate tape, then calcipetrol ointment, pyomerculimus, bath puva, bath puva plus targetoid UVB, um, target UVB 308 excimer laser. Topical capsaicin is also effective. Other topical invasive therapy like cryotherapy and intralesional corticosteroid is quite effective treatment. Lichen simplex chronicus, also known as neurodermatitis, it is a circumscribed, highly pruritic dermatosis characterized by a small number of heavily lichenified plaques or commonly a single plaque. Peak incidence 30 to 50, women are more affected. Lichen simplex chronicus is a reaction pattern to scratching similar to prurigo nodularis. However, Unlike prurigo nodularis, the patients who are having rubbing rather than scratching are more likely to develop uh, lichen simplex than prurigo nodularis. Pathogenesis. Usually the patients have a topic background. Population density of nerve fiber is often increased, which is demonstrated by S100 staining. And mass cell numbers are also increased in patients with Lichen simplex chronicus. The pathology shows epidermal pathology shows thick epidermal hyper, uh, hyperkeratosis, hypergranulosis, and irregular epidermal hyperplasia. Clinical features during early stages: skin is reddened and slightly edematous. 
but with time redness subsides and affected skin become pigmented thick and slightly scaly accentuation of normal skin markings almost any area is affected but commonest site are those which are commonly reached like nape of the neck side of the neck lower leg and ankle scalp upper thigh vulva pubis scrotum and extensors of forearms lichen simplex chronicus usually resolves with appropriate treatment but relapses at the same time is not uncommon it should be differentiated with, with lichen planus lichen amyloidosis and psoriasis management treatment is aimed at breaking the itch scratch cycle suppression of pruritus by topical or intralegional corticosteroids then application of occlusive dressing or occlusive bandage um will intensify the effect of topical steroids self adhesive steroid impregnated tapes are often beneficial for very chronic lesions substances to suppress pruritus like gabapentin is quite helpful so this brings to end of this talk so this talk was um, useful because there is a large majority of patients in our opds which come with the complaint of pruritus and we label as a pruritus of unknown origin or chronic non specific itching so it is mandatory that all such patients should be thoroughly investigated to exclude the underlying dermatological malignant uh, metabolic and other neurological conditions and in addition to the usual treatment of pruritus that is the topical emollients and steroids and antihistamine you must also consider the using a use of uh, opioid antagonists like naltrexone or naloxone and ga gabapentin or pregabalin and in some times we may resort to the serotonin uptake inhibitors like paroxetine etc so i thank you all for a patient listening and see you next time with another edition of my talk so goodbye and have a good day